Hello everybody, and this is Roach, and uh, thank you for joining me. This is going to be our new Let's Play. Now, you may not know what you're looking at right now, but this is a game called Panzer Corps. Now, this is also quite a few of the expansions and other things with it in the DLC. But basically, Panzer Corps is a modernized or remake of an old game called Panzer General. Now, a lot of you old uh, strategy gamers may know about it. It's, you know, it's a very well-liked uh, gaming series. And Panzer Corps is kind of the modern retake of it. It's, you know, it's got uh, somewhat modernized graphics, but the gameplay is all pretty much the same, uh, along with most of the actual setups of the maps and such. So what we're going to do is we are going to be going to the, this little folder right here, this classified area. And then we're going to be playing the 1939 Grand Campaign. So basically what this is, is this is a Grand Campaign that's going to take all of the DLC and expansions, and it ties them all together into this very long campaign that starts with the beginning of the invasion of Poland. So we're going to go and head into this, and I'll explain game mechanics and such uh, as we go. Okay, we're going to be going on to Lieutenant Difficulty, because I'm still kind of a noob to this game. But everything else is going to be on, so weather, the supply, fog of war, because uh, supply does matter. Things like ammunition supply and fuel, uh, and weather can cha drastically change types of engagements to one side or the other. Uh, and there's fog of war, and uh, there's going to be an undo move function, just because uh, I uh, like to change my mind very regularly. So, we're going to click play. Alright. <clears throat> I'm going to read these because uh, in the Grand Campaign, uh, there is actually no voice acting. Uh, if you play some of the other campaigns, there is actually voice acting for these opening uh, little information things. But Operation Fall of Ice. Our invasion of Poland has begun. You, Herr General, are charged with leading the primary assault from, German, from Germany's eastern border all the way to the heart of the Polish nation. As you command your forces from the front, I will keep you informed of our objectives and share intelligence with you as it becomes available during these briefings. Your first task is to launch an assault across the Odor River, forgive me for my pronunciation, uh, that is aimed at the, oh Jesus, uh, Parzon region. In addition to securing your, our, your metropolitan objectives, you should strive to occupy as many Polish airfields as your force, as your, as your forces encounter. The cap, uh, sure of these, uh, God. The capture of these should be should deal a crippling blow to the Polish Air Force, granting your forces near unchallenged mastery of the skies in the upcoming campaign. Good luck, Herr General. But be warned, failure is not an option. Note, southeastern unit limitation. Huh. Captain two. I have no idea what that means. Alright, proceed! And we're loading, and we're loading, and we're here. As we can see, the uh, forecast is today it's going to be clear weather and dry, and tomorrow it'll be cloudy. Okay, our decisive victory, which gives us access to uh, better missions or early invasions, or just generally is, it gives you better score, capture all objectives and uh, capture all city objectives and capture at least three Polish airfields. Uh, now we can just win if we capture at least three city objectives by the end of the uh, the campaign, which is 14 turns, or this uh, operation. All right, so here's the main battle screen. This is kind of what you're uh, you're going to be looking at most. Now, <clears throat> it's a hex-based game, and uh, our units... I'm not sure if our units are deployed, are they? Yes, our units are already deployed. These are, uh, like, our starting military units, and we can tell the ones that are ours are outlined in gold around the unit strength icon, and the units that do not have uh, a gold kind of box around these numbers... These are kind of uh, attached units, or ones that won't be carrying with us through the campaign. Because the cool thing about Panzer General and Panzer Corps, as a result, is that the uh, units from your army stay with you as you go from objective to objective. So as we go through the war, these troops will gain better, uh, better stats as they level up, and will also uh, become... Uh, like we can upgrade them to like different units. So that right now, I think this is a uh, this is a Panzer One A. You know, by 1942, it could be you know a a, a Panzer Four H or a Tiger One. So I think a Tiger One. Not uh, totally sure on when those work. Yeah, I think yeah yeah. Okay, 
we can also open up this, which is the kind of a store, you could say. Basically here, we can buy units with uh, prestige that we get for doing certain things. Um, we can attach certain things to them. See, so we have like a, a transport that we can put onto these infantry guys and uh, with, uh, I'm not actually sure about uh, if there's anything else we can attach with other uh, units. But uh, just for now, we are going to get an extra infantry up there because infantry and vehicles can capture cities but aircraft and artillery cannot uh, we're just going to get kind of these guys in order uh, yeah we'll get another one of these we got plenty of air cover so let's get another infantry unit uh, these are mountain troops so I guess we'll get one of these guys because they're very good at uh, certain things like uh, attacking from mountains into mountains and uh, other you know bad terrain um, hmm. I think artillery And we have one more thing here. Now you can see we don't have enough unit slots. So there's core slots and you'll get more of these as the um, the campaign goes uh, goes on. Uh, so that so we need to keep an eye on that and keep force balance uh, kind of there. Uh, we can also buy units in between and we sometimes will be limited on how many units we can push out there. So you can technically sometimes have more units than are available to put on a map. Just kind of like our reserve of our army group. So, our Panzer Corps, as it were. Alright, so let's get into this. Now you can see the units that have like a green arrow here and a little uh, targeting icon. These are um, basically... Uh, th these are units that can attack and move. You can move and then attack, or you can just attack. You uh, No, you can move as well. No, okay. Disregard that last one. You can move and attack in pretty much any order. Uh, I think. It's been a while since I've played this. Uh, but basically we're going to send these guys up. And they move. And this is a good attack. Alright. Now that we did that. We also uncovered this, uh, or this um, cavalryman. Move him there. As you can see, we just got through that guy. And we're just going to move up since we don't have uh, pretty much anybody to fight us now. So we're going to move this over here and attack and kill them, which is good. And then, because there's an airfield close here, we're going to put our BF-109E over there, get some good air cover. Now this is a scout, so sometimes the scouts can move twice or multiple times. Uh, usually when you move, even if like you haven't gone your distance fully, you're pretty much stuck, like you can't move any further. But with scout units, you can. So we're going to check these guys here. All right, so they're low on ammunition. Make sure nobody can rebase on that airfield. I think that's all of our guys moved. Yeah, it is. Okay, so now what we do is up here we have an end turn button and we end the turn. And we let them do what they gotta do. 
which apparently wasn't much. All right, <clears throat> we are sending a special reconnaissance unit to your uh, to supplement your forces. Although the flight leader of this unit has been termed unsuitable for combat, there are those that believe he may have untapped potential to that end. I highly recommend you do not disband this recon flight, but instead make the maximum use of it for every battle to come. And it's a uh, Stuka. It's a JU-87B reconnaissance flight. We'll leave him for now. We'll see about our how we can tactically use him later. Alright. See, they just got rugged defense, which means they have extra defense for that turn. Um... Now, see, if I had attacked with these mountain troops here, no unit can get rugged defense, uh, f like, when they're attacking. So, like, if the mountain troops attacks me, no, uh, no rugged defense. I also don't, th I also think it's the same thing for pioneers, so engineers as well. And you see, I can move after that, but I want to capture this airfield, so I'm going to do that. Alright. Now... I want to recon a bit more, so I'm going to move over here. Alright, so they've got plenty of air and ground troops there. So let's move these troops north. Just enough to the point where I think I can actually take that airfield. And these troops we're going to send to this rail junction. Alright. Now... Hmm... Now you see, uh, if you're using an aircraft and they're in within a tile next to a unit you're attacking on the ground, they can have an attack of opportunity basically against you, if you think about it in Warhammer terms. So see, since there's this one tile between me and the guys that I'm attacking, this anti-aircraft unit and this air unit cannot attack my BF-109. It's a little thing to keep in mind. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is an artillery piece. I think. Yeah, it's an artillery piece, so we're going to move it up. Because those guys are going to be entrenched and they're going to be hard to deal with. Alright. Basically, we're just splitting up into, like, a couple of different uh, subgroups at this point. Now, see, here we might get attacked. But I don't like the look of that uh, anti tank gun. Uh, unit inside that town. Yeah, we get hit. And we do a decent amount of damage. And hopefully we'll absorb an attack from that anti-aircraft unit. Okay. Anybody else that can move? Well, this guy can attack. Yeah, it's worth it. Trade off, but we were already in a better position when that started, so definitely worth it. We'll have to, have to capture this at some point. Alright. Oh, by the way, in this little mini map down here, the uh, little cities that have circles on them, those are objectives to win the mission. So right now, we are tasked, we have to capture this little, this town, this rail station, this airfield, that airfield, this town, this, like, uh, this whole bit right here, these two towns on this road, and this airfield down here. So actually, we could bypass this town, this town, and these checkpoints. You can also tell that by, uh, if it has a gold little box around it, that we need to take it. So, let's end the turn, see what they do. Alright, 
So we just lost the recon flight. I guess they were correct when they said uh, it probably wasn't a good idea to put them in combat. See that little uh, change of color in the in the actual number in the unit strength? That means it's suppressed, which means we can do more damage to it. See, we just took that airfield, which is an objective. Now, we could leave right now, and we wouldn't have to deal with these guys here, but I don't like leaving guys behind our lines. But since it's an anti-tank gun, I'm not going to use my scout cars for it. I'm just going to use the scout cars to scout. Let's get, yeah, let's take out that anti-aircraft gun. Always go for the one that'll give you a kill. Might be the reason why I'm not that good at this game. Basing. Now, one thing that uh, that I didn't know about for a while, but because uh, you will have to resupply your aircraft's ammunition and fuel, and the way to do that is put them next to a friendly airfield. The thing is, is that obviously the airfield's only one hex. Well, aircraft can still be resupplied and rearmed on an airfield as long as they're within one hex of it. So technically, an airfield can service seven different aircraft units. Now, you'll probably never have that many in one army, uh, if you know what you're doing, but there's something to keep an eye on. Something to know about. And knowing is half the battle. Getting close to taking out this unit in the town. Definitely don't want to leave him here because obviously it's an objective. Alright, they've been dealt with. So we'll move these guys in here. We'll move this unit over here. We just captured both units within the same phase, which is good. Okay, so we've already made good headway in the south, we just need to keep, don't get bogged down in the center or in the north. Obviously, the north's going to be probably the hardest one to deal with, so it's in the turn, see how they do. Well, not the best, apparently. Now, you see how that unit has 11 strength? You can basically oversupply a unit at some point some points throughout the game if you have the uh, points to spare it's actually somewhat of a good idea because uh, that gives them you know they can take more hits etc and they're a little bit stronger but it will cost you extra pre prestige because you can uh, you can elite replacements and that'll give you you can do that to uh, to help you in a fight Take out the 
only infantry that's in this area. There we go. Okay. Now this is a bit stupid, but they've been damaged quite a bit. Anti-tank gun there. 